Okay, so let's take a look at abstract reasoning. Now, abstract reasoning is a very, very nice section. In fact, it's one that you should actually enjoy doing. Now, if you practice a lot of abstract reasoning questions, no doubt you will improve in your score. The more practice you have, in fact, with anything, the more practice you put in, obviously, the better your result. Now, with abstract reasoning, I practiced a ton load. In fact, I completed all the questions on Medify and had to repeat them once again. So I really became familiar with the styles of questions that I would face within the UCAT exam. So let's take a look at the first thing, which is very important, which is the mnemonics. So these mnemonics will help you memorize certain patterns that you will face in the UCAT exam so specifically abstract reasoning so let's take a look so here are just a few of the mnemonics that some UCAT students have used some that I've made up but feel free to use whichever one you feel comfortable in using method number one is cans so color angle arrangement N stands for number of sides shape intersections S stands for symmetry S stands for shape Method number two is sponks, so S stands for shape, P stands for position, O stands for orientation, N stands for number, C stands for colour, S stands for size. Method number three, NSPCC, so this stands for number, size, position, colour and conformation. Looking at method number four is SSSPN, so or spin, S stands for shape, S stands for size, S stands for shade, P stands for position, N stands for number. And then the method I used quite a lot, which was Spanx, stands for S stands for shapes, P stands for position, A stands for angles and arrangement, N stands for number, C stands for color, S stands for size. Now having gone through all of the methods, so all the mnemonics, these were the ones which were the most common. So shape, position, number, color, size, and angle. This is what you need to look out for whilst attacking abstract reasoning questions. So shape, position, number, color, size, and angle. Now, obviously you can use the other methods as well, but these main patterns in the middle are the ones that you need to keep an eye out for. But obviously these mnemonics are here to help you, help you to memorize the pattern. So when you go into the exam and you have that one minute instruction reading time, don't read the instructions. You already know what to do. What you need to be doing is writing the patterns or your mnemonic on the whiteboard. Write them down and then write any other patterns you know that you find hard, you know, recalling or patterns which are very hard. So, so memorizing any one of these mnemonics will be helpful.